Should I get a boyfriend first year of college or not? Nah? Okay, this is a good thing to, 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 to talk about. Do not get in a relationship with an upperclassman before Hi guys, and welcome to the video. So, I asked people on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, <laughs> uh, I asked for some questions, maybe like an hour ago. I've gotten a bunch of responses, so I thought we would run through a couple. So yeah, this is gonna be a fun little Q&A, yay. The first question I got was, why did you move into a dorm when you could go to MIT from home? Kind of that same vein, are you happy with living in a dorm? For those of you who don't know, I live like 30 minutes away from MIT, maybe like 20 on a good day if there's no traffic. Physically, commuting was a possibility, but MIT does require all first years to live in a dorm or some type of living group on campus, I think. I really hope I'm not wrong on that, that'd be so embarrassing. But also, I wanted to live in a dorm, my first year at least, because I was like, yay, dorm, college, experience, you know, that type of stuff. Um, did I like it? Yes, I loved it. My dorm was amazing, especially my floor. My floor, so good, chef's kiss. The dorm rooms itself were a little on the ugly side, I'm gonna have to say, at least in the dorm that I was in, but they were fine, like totally livable. That's not really why you wanna live in a dorm, is it? Like, no. You wanna live in a dorm because of the proximity to your like hallmates. Um, you can make really good friends. You can like study together. I couldn't have imagined a better environment to live in. The RAs didn't care. They didn't care at all. No one was toxic. It was like, it was great. What would you tell yourself if you could go back to your senior year? Okay, what would I tell myself? I think senior year me was a little too eager to do anything to fit in. There was this like weird period in high school where like, I didn't really have a solid friend group and then like towards the end of my junior year I kind of started to have a friend group into my senior year I was trying to do everything I could to kind of remain in that like socially stable category because I was scared of like going back to the time where I didn't really have a friend group that sounds really depressing but it wasn't that depressing but I think my biggest regret is prioritizing um, like social relevance, I guess. If I could tell my senior year self to change anything, it would just be to like spend time with people that you actually enjoy spending time with. Don't care too much about your social status or whatever, because ultimately, like it was my senior year, we were all about to go to college, everything was about to change, like it didn't matter. Favorite class slash professor at MIT. I did a thing where I ranked all my classes, but um, the winner in that, and what I would say is my favorite class is I took this comparative media studies class and it was just intro to comparative media studies and it was really good i gotta say people in my class were really fun professor was pretty cool too he did this thing where he really liked to listen to himself talk what would happen in class is we would be going over some reading or something he'd be like he'd ask a question pretty open-ended someone would raise their hand and say like two sentences and he'd be like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i also think though is that and then he would go on for like 15 minutes and then we'd just be there like mm-hmm mm-hmm wow mm-hmm so that was fun the grading was also really easy i pulled a name that class even though i was on pnr which is past no record yeah that was a fun class recommended study methods or techniques i also have a video on like how to study or how I study. I don't know if I'd call this a favorite thing, but I think the best thing to do and the most practical, probably the most straightforward way to study also is to do like practice problems, practice tests, repeat old homeworks, go to a review if there is one. But yeah, that's basically it. Ooh, someone asks, how is it living in Massachusetts? Well, I gotta tell you, Massachusetts is kind of thriving right now. Knock on wood. Yeah, low key Massachusetts, like, Killing the game, like yes, like yes, go off. If anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about. So Massachusetts has started its reopening. I think we're on phase two right now and it's going pretty well. So far we have not seen a surge. We have not seen a second wave. I think our R naught is down to less than one. So that's very good. Someone asked, do you play instruments? Yes, I do. I've been playing the violin for a long time. Haven't played in a while, whoops. So yeah, I like probably every other Asian child out there played violin from the age of five to like 15. And then I quit after sophomore year. But the thing is I was never really good at it. I was always like a little bit above average good, but I wasn't like your prodigy violin, whatever. And you know how like you audition for orchestras and stuff? Maybe you don't, but here in Boston we have NEC and we have 
BISO, which is Boston Youth Symphony Orchestra. And I auditioned for both of them like every year for such a long time. For a while I was like moving up every year. It was like, you know, going steady. And then eventually I hit a gap where I couldn't get to these like top two orchestras because I was not good enough. I also didn't really enjoy it. If you're an Asian person, you probably know this experience of being forced to learn an instrument. However, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad that I played violin for that long. Learning music and something about that like hand to brain connection was like really good for me. I, I don't know. I also was able to take music theory in high school. I took AP music theory. I learned a lot of stuff and I learned how to write four part harmonies. And that was, I'm not gonna say fun, but it was cool to know how to do it. Through that class, I learned how to harmonize to music. So now when I'm singing, I can like harmonize to a part and I think that's cool. So this is such a nerdy Q and A. What would be your dream job after college? If only I knew. I don't know if y'all have seen my work vlog where I talked about how I was terrified of getting a corporate job. Well, I don't know what my dream job is. I really don't know. My major right now is a pretty versatile one. It could go into like a bunch of different fields, which I think is good because I don't know what I want to do yet. So hopefully I find my way. I also think it's a uh, freshman year is pretty early. So I don't know. I don't know. Was MIT your dream school or was it somewhere else? Okay, so MIT was not my dream school at all. I literally applied because my mom said so. And while I was applying, I did not envision myself going there at all. Like it never even crossed my mind. It's not that I didn't want to go. It's that like, I didn't even think about going because A, I thought I would never get in. B, I was focusing on other schools that were my dream schools. Okay, so my camera ran out of space, whatever, we're back. Okay, so I, when I was applying to colleges, I applied ED to Columbia. So I guess that was my dream school, but I never had a school that like from the age of like six, I was like, I wanna go to that school. I decided to apply ED to Columbia for pretty shitty reasons. I think the biggest influence on me at the time was my sister and she went to school in New York and she loved it. And I wanted to go to school in New York, but I also wanted to go to like, you know, a prestigious just Ivy League University. So I decided Columbia was a great idea, which in retrospect, I am horrible at writing. Humanities is not my strong suit. I don't know why in the hell I would go to Columbia. So thank God they rejected me. And then when I got into MIT, I was like, oh shit, like I could go to MIT. <laughs> and then that was when, yeah. But I think I ended up in the right place and that's what's important. So yay. Are you considering a gap year given most slash all courses will be online? The thing is, I keep saying that I would take a semester off or a year off, but in reality, I think I'm going to go back to school no matter what, just because I would have nothing to do in that gap year, except for like make videos, I guess. But usually like if you're taking a gap year or a gap semester, you kind of want to like have either like a, like a program in mind or something to do, or it could just be working. But I feel like spending an entire semester just like sitting, making videos, having nothing to do would be pretty like detrimental to my like psyche. And I think my brain would melt and then I would be stupid and then I would fail all my classes. The MIT situation right now, it looks like some students will be able to go back to campus. And given the fact that they will probably prioritize freshmen and then seniors, um, it looks like for me and most of my class, we will be doing online school again, which sucks. That sucks. Kind of connected. Someone said, are online classes harder? Um, so yes. <laughs> They're not exactly harder in like material wise. A lot of the classes were actually made easier. You know, open note tests maybe less tests, but even so, I think online learning is just so much harder because it's so hard. It's so hard to stay engaged with your learning and the academic environment when you're at home because your home is such a like not learning space. It was hard for me to go to my lectures. It was hard for me to go to office hours. It was hard for me to take those extra steps that I normally would to enhance my learning and enhance my education. Also, I think just online instruction tends to be more difficult. It doesn't like resonate as well when you're talking through a screen. That sucks. Wildest party story. One time I was with my friends from high school, they came to visit me and we hit up like five frats in one night. That's not exactly wild, but it was a fun time, a fun mem. And I'm really gonna freaking miss it. Should I get a boyfriend first year of college or not? Okay, this is, this is a good, this is a good thing to talk about. So at MIT, I think other colleges too, but especially at MIT, we have this thing called the November rule. 
It most strongly applies to like freshmen and upperclassmen, but it can also apply to like freshmen and freshmen. And the rule is if you're a freshman, do not get in a relationship with an upperclassman before November 1st. And I even think it can be extended to like, if you're a freshman, don't get in a relationship with another freshman. And the reason for this is because, and this is very true, and this can be applied to all colleges. If you get in a relationship very early on in the school year and you spend a lot of time with that person, you're gonna have trouble making your own friendships and your own friend groups. And all your experiences are gonna be connected to this other individual who like maybe you won't like stay with for that long. And then when you break up, you'll have no like other friends, you'll have no solid friend group to kind of help you through that. Versus if you like focus on building a good foundation first, having your circles and then getting into a relationship, then if that goes badly, then you have this support system to fall back on. If it's like a freshman and a freshman, I think that's a little bit easier because you both have friend making to do. It just gets very dangerous if you're a freshman and there's an upperclassman because they already have friends, they already have their circles and you don't. And now you're suddenly reliant on this person and their connections and you're not building any of your own. So November rule, follow it. I would say a good time to get in a relationship if you want to is second semester because then you kind of you've already set yourself up you've established your circles then is the time where you can start you know looking for that special someone I should write a book on this great stuff when did you know what you wanted to do in college funny you should ask because I still don't know and that's okay that's fine even though I already declared a major I still don't really know what I want to do I remember the during the first week there was a talk about like academics or something for all the first years the guy who was talking I don't remember who it was said something that has really stuck with me it was like something like 40 something percent of MIT graduates end up in a career that is not related to their major. Once I heard that, I was like, oh, so it doesn't really matter what I major in. So I'm not like, oh my God, is this gonna be my major? Like this is gonna affect the rest of my life. Like I don't think like that anymore. So it's definitely take the stress off. But to answer the question, I still don't know what I wanna do in college. Even though I have a major declared, it's not like my passion, you know? It's just like there. Which MIT restroom is your favorite? Nano. For sure. It's quiet, it's clean, it's peaceful, the stalls are big, the facilities are great, it's serene, you get a nice environment. If you want more from where that came from, go check out my TikTok. Shameless plug. What are you studying? I am currently majoring in computer science, data science, and economics. It is a combined major, but it's one major. I'm also thinking of double majoring in that and business analytics. Not sure if that's gonna pan out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with this major, but that is my current plan. How did you get an internship in your first year of engineering? Okay, so that's a great question because typically Big companies are not looking to hire freshmen at all, especially in more technical fields like engineering. I got an internship that was completely unrelated to what I was studying and that's how I got it. Basically, I kind of used the other things I was doing in my life like YouTube. I was also a campus ambassador for Bumble and doing marketing for them. That's what I used kind of to get an internship because I knew that my first year engineering skills would not cut it because it won't. It really won't unless you're a prodigy. It's not gonna like help you with anything or unless you have a connection, but I don't. So let me walk you through how I got an internship. Beginning of January slash February, I started to panic because I was like, you know what? All my friends are making summer plans and I don't have one. I had applied to a study abroad program and I was rejected, so that was upsetting. So not only was it a slap in the face, it was also, you don't have plans for summer anymore. I started to panic a little bit, as one does. And then I went on to LinkedIn, I went on Handshake, I went on a bunch of job boards, and I literally applied to like every internship that even remotely seemed like they would accept freshmen. In total, I applied to about 40 internships. I had a whole spreadsheet where I was like writing up what internships I applied to. And then I did get accepted to one. One out of 40, I got accepted to one internship, which is the internship I'm doing now. So thank you to that company for hiring me. But yeah, it's very hard to get an internship your first year. Honestly, I wouldn't expect it unless you have a connection, which again, I don't. So a bunch of my friends, instead of doing internships, they're doing research with MIT. I'm like the only person I know doing an internship in a field that is totally unrelated to what we're studying. But tell us about college hookups. They happen. Don't expect a text back. 
that's it. What was your best moment in high school and why? My best moment in high school was when first semester of senior year ended and I was like, I'm out, I'm done, peace out, I'm leaving. That was probably my best moment and it only went up from there. It really, second semester of my senior year was amazing. It was amazing. Thanks for asking all those questions. I had fun answering them. I don't know, I like talking about this stuff. Um, so yeah, peace out. Let's pray that college still happens in the fall. I'm praying to Raphael Reif. Thanks for watching, bye.